Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the basics of power distribution in VLSI chips. We are going to cover this in a very superficial manner because we have not still understood the physical design. So to understand the nitty gritties of it is going to be quite challenging. Now power distribution network is very very important because it has to carry the current from the pads to the transistors on chip. We saw that when we studied input output protection circuits. It also has to maintain a stable voltage because VDD has to be maintained to a stable value because that will give us a low noise and it will give us better noise margins as well. We have seen that in case of CMOS inverters when we studied that. It has to provide the average and the peak power demands of my entire circuit. It has to avoid electromigration. Electromigration is nothing but a huge current density which flows across the metal which causes it to wear out. So it has to avoid that. So power distribution should be able to avoid that. It should consume overall very little chip area and it should be easy to do layout of. Now, ideally my VDD should be equal to VDD nominal minus some drop. Now there are two type of drops. This drop should be less than or equal to 10% of VDD. The sources of drop are IR drops and LDI by DT drop noise. Now what is this? Let's understand. Suppose this is my inverter. There is an inductor present here technically. And whenever my supply voltage or the ground simultaneous switching happens when they are cascaded due to fluctuations in your supply voltage the current will fluctuate which is nothing but the simultaneous switching noise what happens is one stage is triggering the other in stage and there are some spikes or ground bounds means your supply or your ground are not having a steady value they are fluctuating with this fluctuation there will be an inductor which will resist the flow of current through it and LDI by DT noise would be resulted which has some own issues which will lead to a voltage drop lesser than VDD. The IR drop are nothing but when this huge metal wires are pressed on your IC this wires have resistance and the resistance values of this wires of supply are huge it will lead to IR drop as well. This is a problem for us. So supply noise is equal to variations in power supply voltage that act as a noise for the logic gates. We saw that that fluctuations in the supply voltage when the switching has to take place if it's strongly interpreted by any input of the previous stage it will trigger the wrong circuit and it will lead to problems. And we also saw power supply wiring resistance IR drops we spoke about that. Some of the solutions are mentioned here. Again, we are not getting into the details of each of this solution. We'll just see one or two of them. We will redesign our power and ground network. We'll see one of those. So power supply noise is a serious issue now because noise is getting worse as the technology is scaling down. Noise margin decreases now because of the supply voltage scaling. Power supply noise may overall slow down the circuit performance because it leads to degraded current at the output. The ID is reduced. Power supply noise may also cause logic failures. We saw that in case of simultaneous switching noise, if one block is triggering the next one, it may lead to device failure also. So what we can do is we can do floor planning, placement and routing where we are very, very sure how we want our supply rails to be. And one of that phenomena which we can see here is to create a mesh like structure where VDD and VSS are kept opposite to each other. So VDD and VSS are kept opposite to each other. If you see this, this is VDD, this is VSS, VDD, VSS. So in your entire chip, it would be easy for you to route the wires so that the resistance is minimized and the connections are easily made. Fine, this is one of the approaches. We can have a mesh-like structure also where, suppose this is my VDD, this could be my VSS and you can keep on having this for different, different logic levels. You can have your VDD again. It's the same metal, mind you. So this is VSS. So if you have this mesh like or a tree like structure and you ensure that you would not have high resistance value which will lead to the decrease in IR drop and you will have better supply voltage given to all the transistors or all the components present in that cell. So that's the basics of that. Electro migration, we have already spoken about electro migration correct. Electro migration is a phenomena in which high current densities flow across a metal wire and if that happens through your supply voltage then that will lead to the device wear out. Metal can also wear out because of the high current density. In order to avoid that, what we do is we increase the width of my power buses. We might also need to have additional contact connections made to my transistors so that, you know, in case of a failure of the supply, there are these additional contacts that will ensure that the transistor functions properly. So with that, I have covered in very 
simple language or in terms of layman language what is power distribution in VLSI circuits we need to ensure that my simultaneous switching noise LDI by DT and my IR drops should be very less in order to ensure that my entire chip gets VDD or we ensure that to happen we have a mesh like structure we can also have a tree like structure and VDD and VSS can be placed opposite to each other and so on and so forth I hope you have followed this stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much